Welcome back. We're in for a fairly long mission here. That not as long as it was before editing. The basic idea is that we've got a sweep the envelope of Lucky 6 clean of Kalrathing to prevent them impeding the behemoth on its first mission. Breaking attack. Going after. So we will be doing quite a lot of impeding in the meantime, starting off with this wave of rockets. The real challenge here is to kill them all, or at least as many as possible, before Cobra, because I don't want her wasting too many missiles on this wave, as the next wave is much more threatening due to a quirk of ace difficulties AI settings. And therefore if I can arrange for her to fire the missiles at them, I will do so. And as it turns out I can. This is because light fighters, such as these dark hits on ace, seem not to bother dodging, whereas Heavy fighters like these Vactots, and in fact especially the Vactots, they're much more dangerous than the Vactarns or the Asteroid fighters or anything else. Vactots seem to fly on Ace quite a lot like Darkets do on Nightmare. And as you can imagine that's incredibly annoying because basically the idea is that they have a single fighter that dodges around in front of your gun sights to act as a decoy while the others try and get behind you and shoot at you. So what I spend most of my time doing is shooting a back door, sometimes hitting, sometimes missing, much like I am at the moment, and then having to break off my attack because the other fighters have got behind me, and by the time I've dodged them and set up another set of shots, the ship's shields have basically been charged. So I spent about 15 minutes of this mission's war video time, 25 minutes fighting the back door, which adds up to 60% of the time of the mission dealing with 30% of the enemies. Ash occupy yes, I want massive art, I guess. And I should probably not make references that nobody will get. The Agon Rasavar, or Glory of Savar in English, is the Karathi area in the Wing Commander collectible card game, and it also shows up quite regularly in the Academy animated series. Anyway, the point was that a video which contains 60% of the time me not getting very far in whipping down Bactoth shields would not have been very entertaining, which is why the Bactoths I'm showing edited highlights instead of the whole thing, which is what you get with the other fighters. Also, of course, why I wanted to have Cobra spend her time shooting at these guys, with missiles that is. I'm sending my missiles for the other wave of Bactoth, which is larger than this one, it's six in that, there's only four in this one. That's also why I had to order Cobra to attack my target slightly earlier. If she is left to her own devices, she'll go after one of the Corvettes, because there's a very brief period where the Corvette is the only enemy left on the radar before the back to off sphere. So obviously the AI goes after that and then stays going after that. Anyway, speaking of the Corvettes, sigh. You may recall a while ago I complained about how a game likes to put corvettes in that are flying away from you, so that by the time you finish with the fighters, you have to spend ages flying over to deal with the corvette. Well, this time, not only have they done that, but they've actually put two corvettes in that decide to fly in opposite directions. Slightly strangely, what this actually means is that you only have to deal with one of them. Although the mission briefing says that you need to kill all the kill math, by the time I've dealt with this corvette, the other one will actually have blown off the radar. You'll see the orange dot representing it vanish fairly shortly. There it goes. And as a result of that, when I dealt with this one, the autopilot light will come on and the game will not care that I haven't actually killed the enemies, so you don't really have to. Other than that, it's a Corvette. It exists to cause you to get impatient with how long it's taking to kill. Play chicken with a tacky on turret and lose your front armor, like so. In my case, this wasn't helped by the fact that I'd forgotten to redirect my discretionary energy from weapons to shields. But the real problem with Corvettes is still that they're an enemy that's primarily dangerous because you get bored of how long it takes to kill them. That's not going to be a problem at this now point. We have six Strathy here right now, and there will be more along later. If this was Nightmare difficulty still, that would be a terrifying thing to say. Strathy on Nightmare are the hardest enemies of the regular game, 
That's because they carry four image recognition missiles each that are very hard to shake and that don't need a lot to be fired. And they're also pretty hard to hit and have a reasonable amount of firepower as well. Drowthy on Ace are, well, you can already see. It's not so much that they don't dodge particularly effectively, though they certainly don't, as more that they seem to line up and want to be hit. They stop turning and changing direction when I start bringing my guns to bear on them. It's almost spooky, they seem to want to die. Now, this might be some strange variation, uh, particularly low AI level, of the bait tactic that other fighters use, but it's just spectacularly ineffective. The slight problem I do have, well, there's two related ones, but they almost cancel out. I can't spend too long flying in a straight line shooting the Drowthy because then I will have the problem that the other fighters will shoot my rear shields and armor up. And also that because the arrow is much faster than the Drowthy, I will be in danger of colliding with the back of it. But of course, those two just mean that I can just say, okay, I'm going to collide with this now, I'll loop around and come back and hit it next time. And because it's so easy to get on the tail of a drought, there's no reason not to do that. The only reason that these drought take any time at all to kill is just because the drought has got a fair few hit points. I was a bit surprised when I checked the numbers when I was doing the calculation I did about the back goths earlier that it actually took me twice as long to kill a Drowthy as it did to kill a Darky if you average it out over all the ships I face this mission. And I think that's only because of the amount of time I have to spend firing at them. Cobra is surprisingly useless in this section. I don't quite understand the mysteries of how AI wingmen work. They seem to perform almost independently of how easy it is to hit the enemy because she does quite well against the Vakkot. I think she gets 3 or 4 out of 10 total. Whereas here against a Drowthy, she gets one of them. Despite the fact that they're very easy to hit, she's doing damage at much, well, a much slower rate relative to me. Now obviously I'm doing much better against the Drowthy than I was against the Vakkot. Now that might be related to the Rathic target. I think the Vactots will go for me, whereas the Drowthy do spread themselves out a bit more. But even so, it seems that if you look at what the AI wingmen are doing, sometimes they're making long range shots that I would most normally miss, whereas other times, well actually their firing accuracy is always broadly decent, it's their flying ability that's questionable. They spend so little time with their fighter actually pointing at the enemy. So they make far fewer shots than I do. But those shots they do make are fairly accurate. And that seems reasonably constant across most wingmen. I don't know if maybe they reuse the code that does the auto tracking for the Excalibur guns for most wingmen and then decided to limit how good the wingmen were by limiting their opportunity to shoot. It's a possibility, not one. I could evaluate the source code for Wing Commander 3 exists and CIC have it, but they don't have permission to publish it, so it's not a question that can be answered easily. And I probably wouldn't understand the source code even if it was published. I'm not really a programmer and don't have any formal education in computer science. Anyway, back to the action. This is a six pack top wave I mentioned earlier, the hardest challenge in this mission on this difficulty level, so this is why I'm using my missiles, but I don't have a particularly good strategy for using missiles against Factor. Problem is similar to the one I mentioned in a previous mission with Drowthy because of their very wide structure of the wings. It's quite easy to have a missile hit the sides rather than the back, which obviously since you've been tailing the back part and you have to put rear shields down with your guns, you want the missile to hit the part that isn't shielding. Like that one did. But it's not something you can guarantee. I even had a missile hit the front when I fired it from behind once. I'm still not quite sure how that happened, but it did. So Vectarts aren't as easy to shoot down with missiles as I would like. By comparison, uh, a narrow fighter like the, the Pactan or the Dark Hit, those are very easy to hit. I think the reason the Vectarts AI 
is so much higher on ace than that of other fighters is because ace difficulty being the default is more or less an attempt to recreate the difficulty of Wing Commander 1 and Wing Commander 2. And those two games, the heavy fighters are somewhat smarter than the light fighters. The Jalki and the Jalki both exhibit the bait tactic that I've talked about the Kilnapi using a lot, and they're both more frequent users of afterburners and missiles than the light fighters. Neither of them do so to anywhere near the extent that the Wing Commander pre back top does, though, so I think they went a bit overboard with how high they take the back top AI, at least on Ace. One of the problems you have as a result, though actually this is a problem with chasing any fighter that's dodging an afterburner, is that a lot of the time when you're trying to keep the ITPS reticle under your gun sights, the actual ship is obscured by your cockpit. Now there's a solution to this, and I'm showing it off now. Wing Commander 3 was, I think, the first game, certainly the first Wing Commander game, that had this no cockpit view. In Wing Commander 4, this is your only option, so if you really hate it, get used to it, because you'll be seeing it a lot next game. And it does make following fights like these back offs quite a bit easier. I've not been using it for the LP because... It's not that I don't like it, as you can see here, I'm perfectly capable of using it. It's actually somewhat easier, but it feels wrong. Cockpits give me the right sense of immersion, and it feels right to have a cockpit on the screen. I don't know if that was one of the reasons that I had never really quite got used to free space. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I got used to Wing Commander 4 fast enough, so I don't think so. Something else that I don't really understand is one of my own decisions here. You may have noticed a bit earlier, I checked to see how many missiles I had left, discovered I had three, and then didn't fire any. Even though I knew I had these Darkets coming up next, and after these Darkets we had some Stracker, neither of which I was going to need to bother with missiles for, I absolutely have no idea what was going through my head when I decided not to fire any more missiles. The Narkits are slightly the harder enemy of these two, and you can already see how long it's taken to deal with these ones. Cope is going to finish off the last one before I can get around to shoot at it. So you can more or less tell from that how much of a complete joke Stracker have to be on ice. Now, Strako were pretty bad in Wing Commander 2, so perhaps that was intentional, but... You saw them on Nightmare, and they were pretty tricky on Nightmare because they cloak very fast. Here, yeah, they spend a long time out of cloak, and as you just saw there, when they go into cloak, they don't bother to change direction, so you can just carry on shooting where they were, and it'll normally hit them. Compounding that of a traditional Strako failure we're all familiar with already, which is that they're made of wet cardboard, and so I'm not even bothering to try and avoid colliding with these guys. If I collide with them for a big deal, my arrow shields will absorb the impact and the strike will blow up. The only problem with doing it that way is I wouldn't get a kill for it. We now have enough point with knocking at it. The behemoth is supposed to be here if you look at the communication screen. But as you can see, it's not. I don't really know what happened there. And that is it for this mission. So, thanks for watching, I've been Alanin, this has been Wing Commander 3 Heart of the Tiger, and join me next time when we'll blow our planet up. Need clearance, TCS Victory. Looks like smooth sailing for the Big B, Colonel, you're cleared to land. Pretty slick flying, sir. Thanks, Chief. <laughs>